Welcome to another edition of Betty's Kitchen. Today we're going to be preparing egusi soup. Egusi soup is a kind of delicacy in Nigeria. Almost all tribes, every tribe cook egusi soup, but there are, we have different methods of cooking it. We have in my place, we have about at least three or four methods of cooking that egusi. But here, I choose to make mine different. I cook this egusi in a way that you can use it to eat rice. Eba, paledian. I mean, you can eat it like that. So, I have a lot of ingredients here that is going to go into the egusi. Right now, on here, this is the main egusi. It's already blended. I grind it and I turn it, I add water to make it into a paste. So, this is the egusi right now. It's in the paste. These are the other meats, the bitter leaf that will go into it. Then you have the sauce already prepared. Uh, if you go to some of my, if you go to my YouTube channel, it will show you how to prepare tomato sauce. Then you have crayfish and mangi cube that will go into it. Pepper to taste. Then you have fish. You have sliced onions, and you have a stock. This is stock from the meat I prepared earlier on. If you also go back to my YouTube channel, you're gonna see the preparation of meat. So this is where I get the stock from. And the way I preserve my stock, after cooking everything, I'll put these stocks in sandwich bag and freeze them, put them in the quantity that we know I'm going to use. That is how I preserve my stock. So I have it in the freezer, then when I need it, I'll bring it out. That's, those are tips when you want to cook. Because sometimes, what I do, I go to this store, buy my meat, everything in bulk, prepare them, section them in the sandwich bag, and just put them in the freezer so that when I need it, I don't have to be cooking all the time. Those are my tips that I use to get food ready. So that it, I will, I'll be cooking the food in a short amount of time. So if you can see right now, the meat is already prepared, the sauce is prepared, the fish is ready. And all I have to do is just combine it in the pot. So right here in the pot, you have, I use palm oil, a little bit of palm oil and vegetable oil. I mix it together. That's, and I now fry the the, uh, the onions first. So I'm going to wash my hands so I can start the preparation of this food. So right now the heat is on. Then I'm going to add onions into the oil. Then I'm going to add a little bit of uh, salt. I use salt to to fry the to fry the egusi. So right, I use a little bit of salt to fry the egusi. Then by the time I'm adding more goose mouth salt, I know I already have salt in here. So this is what I do. I fry, I fry the paste. I fry these onions a little bit. The onions is being fried right now. You fry the onions. After frying the onions for at least five minutes, you now fry, you now add the the goose in it. Add egusi. Now we find the onions right now. It takes a little bit of time. When I cook egusi, egusi takes more time than other food I cook. Because I try to make sure I fry the egusi because sometimes no, it's not everybody that can eat egusi. Some people they eat it, they purge. So and it depends on what the type they eat. Some people they can eat the regular one with me, which I'm going to do. I'm going to cook that method in the upcoming segment of this program. But right now, this is the first one, the one I really do most of the time, is frying the egusi first. I fry the egusi with onions and salt. Now the egusi is a bit fried. Now I'm going to add the egusi to it. We're going to add this into it and fry it very well. Okay, make it into a paste. You know, back in Nigeria, the metal we do, you fry the egusi first. I mean, you get the real egusi the first. The, they are real, but you get it without blending it. You fry it first before you, pound, you, you use the mortar and the pistol to pound it. Then when you pound it, you add onions to it. It kind of gives you a flavor 
they come in seed-like manner, but it's so nice. Because you use onions, it brings out the aroma in the egosi. That's the method that we, they taught us back home in the village. And that's what we cook in the village. Because as we grow up, we try to cook egosi in a different method that suits us. So this is one of them. So, being at home, we fry them first before we put we add tomatoes, but here I decided make it into a paste and fry it first. I'm going to fry this egg, you see now. I know everybody's, oh, uh, your method is too long, but you talk about what you want to eat. Continue cooking this egg, you see, and it's all ready to go. At least cook it for another 10 minutes. You can see, you see the egg, you see, it's turning. You see it is. We keep turning it so that we will not get burnt. That's the first step of cooking a You will fry it to get, see how it's coming out? That's how it's coming out right now. In the meantime, we prepare all that stuff to go into it. So, that is the stuff. All this go into it. This is water, we're going to add water to it. Create a space in the middle and add the sauce. This is tomato sauce and I'll stir everything in there. So you see that? I put it in the middle and I continue to fry it with the dish. I continue to fry it with the dish. Now add the crayfish also because I'm gonna fry all together. We add the crayfish to it, continue to fry it. Continue to fry it. for another two to three minutes together with the fish. You see how it looks now? That's how it looks. You see it's crunchy. Then you fry it up so that It's a long process, but the outcome is good. It's really good. Now I'm finished frying it. Now I'm going to add the stock into it. Add the stock. Hmm. It's coming out really good. With the 
stuck in it, this won't get. Yes. I hope our younger generation will go and watch this and begin to cook. You should practice, practice, make perfect. That's it, make perfect. Because the more you cook, the more you develop your own method in cooking. So that's the way I see it. I try, I, yes, I've been taught the basic stuff, but as I continue to cook, I try to add things together that will make my food different. And I've been able to achieve that over the years. Now, we're going to add the meat. We're going to add the meat together. Fish. Add everything together. Stir it together. Stir it together. And add some water. And continue to cook. So now, you can see that the food is ready to go. This is their goosey. See how it looks? Because it's been fried. We reduce the heat. Then we we'll add more water to it. As you see, I now have three cups of water that I just added. Because I'm going to allow it to boil. This is the goose. See how it looks. Very nice. Well blended. Raise the heat a little bit because you have water in it. So it needs to cook a little bit. Give it at least three minutes to cook. You cover it up. Let it cook for at least two, three minutes before you add the bitter leaf and the maggi cube and additional uh, salt to taste that's another thing you can do you know boiling now give it two minutes to boil at least two three minutes then before we add the final ingredients so the basic thing about the basic tip about cooking is get most of your ingredients ready meat is boiled put everything together so that when you are cooking you don't have to take much time those are the tips for me coming here you don't have time to go I'm in the US you don't have time to run around go to store and buy this and buy this and buy this so I go to store in the whole day, I go to different stores, buy my stuff in bulk, come back home, cook everything and section and put them in the freezer. So later I use. So because you go to work and you need to cook for a family. Most of the, I cook. I don't really do a lot of restaurant food. I do my cooking most of the time. So that's this how I help myself in making sure we eat. I don't lose my African dishes. I love African food and that's why I still eat it today. And I cook them. So, right now, the agusti soup is boiling. We're going to add Maggi cube. I'm going to add two Maggi cube to this one because it's not a whole lot. So, I'm going to add two Maggi cube and I'm going to add the bitter leaf. And they will all boil together. They will all cook together. You can use other kinds of leaf to cook a goose. You can use bitter leaf. You can use spinach. You can use a. Uh, um, I've never really 
this white color green though. You can use the, there's a leaf from Nigeria, we call it ugu, ugu leaf. You can use that one also. You can use our vegetable green to cook it for a vegetable. We do one we use to cook it for, we call it green. You can still use to cook a goosey. So a goosey can take different kind of leaves. But they all, there's one you have to know, they all have different tastes to it. So this is the end product of this soap. So we're going to test it. Before I add more salt to it, I have to make sure I test it so that I won't have too much salt in it. So right now we're going to take a test session to make sure no too much salt before I add more salt to it. You know, like I told you, I said we already have we already have salt in the in the ingredients. See? That's why it's good to taste your food before you add this final salt. In this one, there's you only need just a pinch of salt to this soup. That's it. Now, here's the egg goosey. We'll let it cook for at least for the next 10 minutes so that everything will be, all the ingredients will be blended together. So that's it for now, for this segment. We'll see you back again. We will present another type of food because we don't cook stew it's, and that's a basic thing we have to have in our house stew for rice for everything in this stew so in the next segment we will be preparing the dish stew stew for you so i hope our children you are learning you are busy here school and everything so i hope you use this avenue to watch this program and learn to cook for yourself. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. You have a good day. Thank you.